Hi, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thank you for clicking on my video today. I try to post true crime videos every week, alternated with random content about mental health and fails and burps and whatnot. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. I know I've been gone for a while, it just felt really wrong to post jolly true crime videos and oh look at me, I have ADHD, whilst the world's on fire and not actually talk about it. So I was figuring out a way to do that and behind the scenes I've been working on the true crime stories anyways I wanted to do <clears throat> a sort of bonus story video thing regular true crime episode will be up I want to say tomorrow but um I don't know what tomorrow will be when this will be uploaded so a day or a few days later after you're watching this right now <laughs> Hi, and <laughs> today's story is very much related to the war that Putin is waging on Ukraine right now. I kind of said Pudding. Putin, you dick. I thought it was a very special story and I want it to be shared. So uh, yeah, please watch this one because it's important. Yeah. <laughs> so without any further ado, sit back, relax, make a cup of tea, grab some snacks and let's listen to today's story. So. Today's story is the story of Laurens van der Graaf. Yes, he's Dutch and I know Dutch names sound like we've got popcorn stuck in our throats. <laughs> But yes, Laurens van der Graaf was born on the 14th of May 1984 and he had an older brother named Marnix and his parents were named Wim and Gerda. Right after Laurens was born, his dad remembers saying to his mum, damn, he's excited. From very early on, you could just tell that he was excited to be here. He also grew insanely fast and he was just such an excited, curious baby boy with a big appetite for life. So when Lawrence went to primary school as a young kid, he immediately had loads of friends because he loved making friends with people and all the kids also wanted to be friends with him. His dad would say that when he came home from work during the day that there were already two kids waiting to see if Lawrence was available to play with and he'd say to his wife, look, there's two on hold already. And Lawrence also quickly showed to have a feeling and a talent for language and the Dutch language especially. His mum remembers that when he was only three years old, he pointed up at the sky, at the clouds, and he'd say, look, mom, the clouds are the footsteps of God and the sky is the sand. At three years old. <laughs> and unsurprisingly, when Lawrence went to high school, he'd immediately be super popular. Not the like annoying kind of popular, but you know, the kind of person everyone wanted to be friends with. And he'd always play the lead role in all of his school plays. And it, the students also wouldn't really be mad that he was always the one to get the lead role because he was so good at it that they really enjoyed watching him be amazing. <laughs> He was just someone whose presence, you know, was immediately known when they entered a room. I know this is said about every subject of a true crime video, but he was just really, you know, one of those people that's the life of the party. And actually, his friends would say that um, when they were at a party and he wasn't there yet, they were kind of unconsciously, subconsciously? Subconsciously. No, because, yeah, because unconscious is like when you're like not awake. Okay. Subconsciously, <laughs> when they were at a party, be waiting uh, for allowance to show up because they subconsciously knew yeah. Felt like the party hadn't started yet. You know, you, you just wanted him there. And now, obviously, the girls would be lining up for him and he would indulge accordingly. But not in a, like, player type of way. He just had a lot of love to give. And for his last year of high school, he actually went to America as an exchange student student we're not gonna try that again to just experience a year of american high school and he went to stay on with a family that immediately fell in love with him the daughter of the family would actually say that only after a few days he already felt like her brother and they were just absolutely in love with him every every sentence that seemed like came out of his mouth was just hilarious it was his personality he, he was just so funny, so kind. What's interesting is that he, at the high school, obviously was also super popular immediately. He had the best time living his American student high school life, which I think Europeans always fantasize about a little because we always see it in the movies, you know, what it's supposed to be like to be a high school student in America because here it's just like you have school and you're going through puberty, so it kind of sucks. But we don't have things like prom or like, I don't know. We don't have a lot of stuff you Americans have. 
and were jealous. Well, of some things. So they always had a lot of exchange students coming in and Lowen's was actually though the first one, the first exchange foreign exchange student to be elected prom king. No foreign exchange student has ever been voted that and it just proved how much everybody loved him. Everybody was just immediately captured by his contagious smile and his great personality. Everything did come easy to him, but he also always gave it his all because he was just like, I'm excited to be here. Let's go, guys. So then after his year was finished in 2003, he came back to the Netherlands and he started to study politicology, political science sorry political science he started studying political science and during his studies he joined a student rowing club called skull skull because i think it's swedish sorry if it's i know it's scandinavian uh but he joined a rowing club he basically walked in there and said hi my name is lawrence uh nice to meet you all uh one day i'm gonna be a chairman of this rowing club and the students immediately thought he was hilarious and unsurprisingly not that much later in 2008 he was asked to be chairman and he obviously said yes here i am i've been waiting all this time it took you so long to ask me <laughs> his rowing mates there said they really liked him not just because of his great outgoing personality but also because he could really show that he understood you and valued you and that you know he liked you the way you were as uh, Mr Darcy would say and because of that people just always felt really safe to be themselves around him so once again Lawrence was spreading joy wherever he went and even though he was studying political science and he was interested in that he still had this passion for Dutch literature and the Dutch language and poetry so he started writing articles for a literary liter, literary student <laughs> magazine called Propria Cures and also because of his poems he got invited at the sort of main music festival that the Netherlands has which is called Lowlands and in there he recited a poem about a Dutch celebrity's genitals in front of a decor of a huge vagina. It's not the V of Vara, fluister it, but it's not warm bed. So yeah, that one thing that he would occasionally do, which I absolutely love, he would sneak in through the back door of the famous Dutch literature gala, where he just pretended to belong there and mingle with the famous Dutch writers and take photos with them, which I thought was pretty genius. <laughs> he was, however, as his parents would endearingly say, uh, the eternal student. I think he finished his studies after 10 years in total. Not that it matters at all. I mean, I didn't study anything after high school and uh, look how good I've turned out. But yeah, just the eternal student, always moving from small flat to small flat. Feel you there. That's what I Now, come on, this up. She won't examine the bin. He was interviewing at some point and he would say that he had a student debt of 40,000 euros and his parents apparently didn't know about that. So when they were sitting on the couch for the television that night with their cup of tea watching their son be on television, they were uh, shocked. <laughs> they nearly had a heart attack. I have very long studied and my study is reusachtig. How much does he pay? It's with a 4, a 0, a 0 and a 0. And not a nil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 40,000. So it's. Yeah. But Lawrence didn't really seem to mind. His bank account was always in the negative, as in uh, minus 500 is your new zero, which is, has been the case for me for the past eight years. Uh, and just like me, Lawrence didn't really seem to mind. He was always like, yeah, whatever. We'll see what happens. I don't care if I'm broke. I don't care if I have a debt. We'll figure it out. Obviously, he did need some money. So he started to work as a bartender at Café de Groene Vlinder. Groene Vlinder translates to green butterfly, which sounds so much better in English. He started working there as a bartender. And obviously, he was immediately the man of the pub. And locals would come there frequently just because he was behind the bar. We know it by now. Lawrence makes everything better everywhere he goes. And now, meanwhile, back at the rowing club, Lawrence met a girl called Carlein. And at some point, Carlein told him that she was going to go on a holiday with her sister to Switzerland by car. And Lawrence said, hey, cool, cool, cool. Can I come? And this was with the sole purpose of winning over Carlein. Because he had had his eye on her for a while and he was like, 
this is the one. I'm just going to get her. So Colin and her sister were like, okay, sure. And the three of them went on a trip and they turned out to have the best time. And very quickly, Lowe and St. Caroline were inseparable ever since. And their friends would say they were just a couple that was always glued together everywhere they went. But they didn't really mind because, you know, those couples were like, oh, get a room or don't put your happiness so in front of my face while I'm single as hell. I'm not, but, you know, we've all been there. But their friends wouldn't find it annoying at all because they were just like, yep, these two are made for each other. This is a match made in heaven. So actually they would always kind of smile when they would see them being all sticky and stuff. <laughs> Didn't need to make it that gross, but you know, we did. They were also the people that were always there, as in when there was a rowing contest and they were super hungover, they would still, you know, hop in their bicycles at seven in the morning to make sandwiches for the rowers there, despite their massive hangover, which, you know, I salute. So yeah, they were just great people to have in your life. Now, at some point, Lowens felt like he really enjoyed working at the bar, but he felt like he wanted a bit more of a serious job and he wanted to contribute to society but funnily enough he ended up accepting a job as a teacher of Dutch language and literature at a local Steiner school a high school and this was ironic because he had always said because his parents were teachers he was never going to be a teacher so his friends thought it was a little funny and teased him with it but immediately Lawrence was at the perfect spot everyone around him started noticing that he would blossom even more and all he would talk about were his classes and his students and the things they'd say or do and how he thought so much about them and his parents obviously were very proud and he just had really found his place in life and in return he was every student's favorite teacher he was just personally involved with every single student even if you didn't have classes from him and was actually one of the only few teachers for whom the kids actually wanted to work and wanted to go to school. I know it's very rare for teenagers to be excited about school, so. And even students of whom the teachers would have never expected it for reasons started expressing a love for writing. They would start to write beautiful stories. His friends would say that they felt that he was the teacher they always wished they'd had and that his students were insanely lucky to have him. And one of his classes he would do about a song called Sterrenstof, which means Stardust, by a Dutch band called Jeugd van Tegenwoordig, which means the youth of nowadays. And they're a very popular band. It's kind of, I don't know what to call it, like Dutch rap, hip hop but it's like experimental. I don't know. He was so passionate about this song, he thought the lyrics were genius, and his students would have never expected a teacher to, you know, do a class on that song. But he was passionately raging about how genius the lyrics were, and, you know, got them excited about listening to music and really dissecting the words and understanding the language which everyone thought was really cool a lot of students would also start to blossom personally because Lowens was just so skilled at talking to each different person in the way that they needed it but also in a way that they felt encouraged and respected and valued which usually as students you feel like you're just doing everything wrong and you're not working hard enough so there's not a lot of teachers that you know know how to encourage someone and he was just really one of those Next to this, Lawrence would also participate in all his school activities. Like I said, with Carlene, he would also be there at 7am to make sandwiches for the rowers there. And with the school, he would also be the first one there to help out whenever he was needed. So he would go on all the school trips. He was a mentor, which meant he had his own class. And also during Christmas, he would be in the Nativity play or play of the Three Wise Men, where he played King Balthazar in a very royal, but also very comical way. And he would just always be involved in everything that was going on. Now some of the students of this school had set up a newspaper where every month or every week they'd interview one of the teachers as well. And obviously Lawrence was one of the first ones to be interviewed after they'd set up the newspaper. And I'd like to read some of the following that he said. So when he was asked the question, where will we see you in 10 years? He said, 10 years from now, I'll be 37. I'll be an old buck. I hope to find my own book in bookstores. I already have a small idea. I don't think it's going to be grandiloquent literature that no one understands. But what we will have is a hardcover. 
not a paperback. And I'd like to be in charge. So in 10 years, I will be principal of this school. And then when he was asked, what is your biggest pet peeve? He says, I find people with pet peeves very annoying, actually. Other than that, I hardly have them. Well, people who put others down, students that bully other students. I just think that people get annoyed too much, you know? There's people who already start whining when they're on the plane home from holiday about the air conditioning being too cold and not having enough leg room. But now I'll stop because otherwise I'll start sounding like one of those annoying people. And I think those are pretty good morals to live by. Now, in July 2014, Garlaine, so Lauren's girlfriend, uh, was almost done with her PhD research, which she was doing over in America. And obviously the couple had missed each other so much that they had planned a trip together. And that was a trip to Indonesia. And they were really excited about it. And actually, their friends and family had kind of, you know, amongst each other, gossiped a little bit. But they all kind of had a feeling that the couple might come back with the news of a baby on the way. So the family and the friends were really excited about it, chatting among themselves like ooh. So at the 17th of July 2014, Caroline and Lawrence went to Schiphol Airport, which is near Amsterdam and yet again <laughs> popcorn stuck in your throat kind of name. They went to Schiphol Airport to start their adventure. And actually the day before, Lawrence had sent all of his students a personal email. So he closed it off saying, sending you love and what a summer already. Enjoy it to the fullest and then come back. And in the PS, he put the lyrics of the song, Kom terug or Come Back by a Dutch band called Spin Fist, which is one of his favorite bands. Now, when Lawrence and Colleen were waiting at the gate to board their flight, they actually texted their group chat with all of their friends saying, I wish you happy summer and la di da, we're about to take off. To which his best friend actually replied with also the lyrics of that same song that he had just sent to his students, which is Come Back by Spin Fist. And uh, to that, Lawrence and Colleen replied with this photo. Now, a couple of feet away from them another passenger waiting to board the same plane was also taking photos and he was taking photos out of the window of the plane and sending them to his family and friends because there had actually been really big news that a plane of Malaysia Airlines had gone missing and everyone was still talking about it so this man that was a few feet away from Lawrence and Colleen is taking photos of this plane and jokingly sending it to his family saying well if it disappears this is what it looks like now the plane in this photo, so the plane that this passenger and Lawrence and Carlein and 295 other passengers were about to board, was actually the now infamous Flight MH17. Now if you don't know the story, Flight MH17 took off from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, but a little under three hours after takeoff, Flight MH17 would fly over the Crimea region, over Ukrainian airspace, and it would be shot down by an anti-aircraft missile that caused it to explode mid-air and crash into a field of sunflowers. Unfortunately, there would be no survivors and 298 lives would end in that field of sunflowers that day. Now, why this happened, what was actually going on, is that the Crimea region in the southern parts of Ukraine was under heavy attacks by Russia at the time. Ukraine, unfortunately, has a century-long history of Russian interference and domination. And Putin, the president of Russia, thought and thinks of the Crimea region as originally Russian. And he was, and unfortunately still is, violently making that known. But already in 2014, a lot of innocent Ukrainian civilians died. And allegedly, because of a mistake, Stake, but that isn't verified yet. Also, the lives of all the people on board of flight MH17 would fall victim to this totally useless and unnecessary fight. Now, since the plane had left from Amsterdam, the majority of people on board were Dutch. So we're a very small country, the Netherlands, and the entire country was shocked and in mourning. And I remember everyone would know someone that knew someone on the plane or someone that knew someone that knew someone that was on the plane and especially because we're a hella privileged country that usually doesn't experience um, acts of terror like this the Dutch people were just horrified. A little over a week after, on the 23rd of July, the first human remains of flight MH17 would be flown back to Eindhoven Airport, which is also in the Netherlands. And from that airport, there would be 40 hearses driving in a funeral procession from Eindhoven to Hilversum. And all of this would be live broadcast on national television. So everyone was watching and also thousands of people were lined up next 
next to the roads and the highways to pay their respects and mourn their loved ones. Today, your journey home begins. It still will be a long journey. moments of their lives when they knew the plane was going down did they lock hands with their loved ones did they hold their children close to their hearts did they look each other in the eyes one final time in a wordless goodbye we will never know Over the next few months, this actually had to be done 40 times because there were so many bodies that were being recovered and a lot of them were actually really hard to identify or took a long time to be found. And a total of 250 hearses with 250 coffins would partake in this funeral procession. About a week after it happened, the school that Lawrence taught at organized a memorial for him and about five to 600 people showed up and they were all students, ex-students and teachers and parents were there and they all came together to mourn their favorite teacher. For music, they would play the song Sky and Sand by Paul Kalkbrenner and obviously also the song called Stardust, which again, if I don't get copyrighted, I will try to insert uh, at some point. Also at his personal funeral with his family and loved ones, they played the theme song of Jurassic Park because he had always loudly told everyone that wanted to hear or did not want to hear that that was the track he would want at his funeral and so they did. You know, I think almost everyone has a teacher or a specific person from their childhood that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. You know, someone that stood out and saw you for who you actually were and knew how to listen to you, to encourage you and believed in you. But also most importantly, someone that knew how to make you believe in yourself again, which I think is very valuable. And that person Person for me was Lawrence. The Steiner school he taught at uh, was actually the high school I went to. I graduated in 2013, so a year before uh, the MH17 was shot down, and I remember hearing it on the news and 
you know, not yet thinking anything of it because I was 19 and I, my head was elsewhere. But I did realise that the entire country was shocked. And then the next morning and I woke up by messages of my old classmates um, telling me that Flowers apparently was on the plane. Every single one of us was, uh, well, the people that I've spoken to, everyone was crying. And I remember people around us not really understanding why we would be so devastated over um, an old teacher dying. But um, I mean, shocked, yes, but we were all really devastated. And uh, that's because he was just the best. And the memorial is actually something that I will never forget. Everyone came together. And despite if you'd known each other throughout your time at school there, or been friends or the opposite everyone was just holding hands or hugging each other and supporting each other and that connected us in a weird way that was um, really beautiful and something I'll never forget now right after the memorial um, I had already moved out but that night I spent the night at my mum's house and together we went through all of the boxes of the stuff that she's kept from me from high school from over the years and if you are a Steiner school kid too or if you know people that go there I'm sure you know that's a lot of stuff <laughs> we Steiner kids have to paint a lot and we like to do our painting and our arts and crafts so there's a lot of boxes to go through from all the stuff that we make during our school years and one of the things I found and was actually also hoping to find was one of the old school newspapers and particularly the one that Lowens was interviewed in and I've just read you something from it but there's a specific sentence that I remember reading when I was still in school when this paper was published and it's something that has just stuck with me I think it's uh, one of the best pieces of advice one can give to another person so here it goes the students had asked Lowens the question what would you really like to do but are too afraid of actually doing. And to this he answered, if something scares me, I try to see it as a challenge. I try to not let my fears lead me, but look at the possibilities that life offers me. I even remember just reading this as a student when he was still our teacher and that sentence actually uh, really tickling me the right way and that might have saved my last years of high school and I will be eternally grateful for that. So that's why I wanted to share it with you as well because I think if even 17 year old me could take something out of that then you definitely can. So yes, that's the story of Laurens van der Graaf and Carleen Kaiser. This crash of flight MH17 really shocked the Netherlands and right now I think we have to remember that this is happening to Ukrainian people every single day and of course this is not just in Ukraine. There's loads of countries who have been living this nightmare for decades and I know I'm a privileged white girl ranting to a camera right now about stuff that she doesn't even experience herself so please go check out the description box below because I've linked websites on how you can help not just in Ukraine but in any area that's under attack of tyranny right now and it's also not just donating money because I'm broke as hell and then I feel horrible about not knowing what to do and you want to do something but you can also also donate blankets, clothes, diapers, uh, any medical things that uh, people might need and I hope together we can do a small step in changing this narrative and removing Putin and his small dick complex from our history. No offense to small dicks obviously, all dicks are beautiful want that said. If you've taken anything away from this video please go do something for me and remember to pause for a bit today and regardless of anything that might not be going so well in your life um, try to without any judgment appreciate being alive and obviously I am privileged my body is healthy-ish but whatever your situation might be please just take a moment to think of the fact that you're alive you're born once as far as we know and let's try to appreciate it more go outside go find whatever nature you can find near you even if it's just a tiny little sprig of grass that grows between two bricks on the street look at it and try to think how cool is nature if you see a dog Go pet it! How amazing is it that we have dogs? If a ray of sunshine happens to fall on your face, go enjoy it! Appreciate the small things around you and I know how cliche it sounds and I've been depressed and people have told me all these one-liners for years and they never really stuck because I thought yeah 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 I know that but I didn't feel it and it's gonna sound dark but honestly what the story of Lowens has taught me and also the passing of my aunt last year is that I could be dead tomorrow 
I know this sounds dark, but I could be. And if I do happen to die tomorrow, all I care about my family knowing is that I've lived and that I've made an effort to make choices for myself that are going to make me happy and that I've been a kind person to everyone else. No one's going to care if I did this college or that college. Or no one's going to care if I quit my job at one point because I needed a mental health break whilst society thought that I should just suck it up and work harder like everyone else. No one's gonna care about that. I know how cliche it sounds, but please, please, please make the best out of your own life. You always have a choice. Thank you for watching this video so far because it's a story close to my heart and um, I hope you have a lovely day. Be kind to yourself, be kind to people around you and I will see you in a few days with a regular true crime video or a random ADHD video because it can be either. Yeah, give yourself a big kiss in the mirror from me and a big hug and I'll see you soon. Bye! Bye!